Alright, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can have particles emit other particles based on their lifespan. There's another way you could do that is with collisions with the col collision event editor, but um, I ran across an example. I was doing an underwater bubble simulation, and after staring at my fish tank bubbles for a few days, I noticed that you know some bubbles would pop essentially and create smaller bubbles and in order to recreate that with the collision event editor I would have to make something collide with it and animate it you know hitting one particle and it was just really cumbersome so what I ended up doing is using the technique I'm going to show you to have my lifespan of the first particle object be random so when it died it would um, at whatever age it was it would emit anywhere between two and five more bubbles so I got this scene set up kinda similar where stuff's just going up and I'm gonna set the lifespan to lifespan PP Creation expression, I'm going to say it should live anywhere between five, well, let's go three and five seconds. So, pp equals something between three and, uh, let's go six. Three and six seconds. some die at different parts and I got a uniform field on here I'm gonna lower that just so we don't have to deal with such a big scene and I'll turn that its magnitude halfway down and that one died already and Okay, you can see them kind of dying at random. Alright, so instead of having particles emit from these particles, like by going particles emit from object with our particle selected, I'm going to use the emit command. And in order for that to work, you have to have another particle shape or object, I mean, in your system or in your scene. So to do that, you can just type in particle down here. Hit enter, and if you check in your outliner, now you have particle object 1 and 2. 1 is what we already have, and 2 is that new guy. So then within our expressions, we can call the emit command based on certain criteria and it'll emit particles for us so let's get some code written so on our particle one object is where we're going to write all these expressions because it's going to depend on if these are alive or dead so in our runtime, we're first going to say if our age is greater than or equal to lifespan pp, then we're going to, you know, run through some commands. So if it's greater than or equal to do some stuff to it. Okay. First we're going to want to find out where that particle was when it dies. So we're going to separate out its positions 
into a variable. Alright, and next we're going to want to decide on how many particles are going to be emitted. And for this example, it's anywhere between 2 and 5. So we'll put that into a float value, our variable, to use later. Call it emit num. And that equals anything between 2 and 5. Oops. Now it gets a little trickier here. We're going to uh, do a four, or no, yeah, wait, yeah, a four loop. And what that's going to do is loop through a bunch of commands based on, um, in this case, a value. So if it gets above a value, it's going to quit. If it hasn't reached that value, it's going to run through a bunch of commands again. And we're going to use this emit um, emit num to decide how long it should do these commands. So for uh, variable i, which can be set to anything, but we're going to start at zero. So i equals zero. Cool. Now to start out with. Now if i is less than our emit num I'm going to want it to basically go through the commands I'm about to write again so to do that I'm going to say it um, i plus plus which means add one to whatever it used to be. So if it's zero, now it's one. If it's one, now it's two. But if it ever gets above this, it's not going to run through these commands I'm about to write anymore. So first we're going to have to decide at what direction these new particles that are going to be emitted are traveling. So we can just type in a vector random velocity, which I just copied and pasted this. So in X it can go either left or right. In Y, since it's bubbles, I'm only going to want it to go up or 1 and Z can go either forward or back. Once that's decided, I'm going to finally want to emit my particle. So the command is emit, oddly enough. And it's an object. And it's called particle2. Alright. And then there's tons of flags in this. Um, the help docs list all of them and do a pretty good job of explaining what they do. But one we're concerned about first is position. And that's going to be where our first particle guy died. And in order to write that out, we're going to use parentheses. That's just the syntax for it. Dot x, y, and z. Just copy this and change it. X, Y, and Z. Alright. And then there's this attribute, and help says that any, um, we're going to label it velocity doesn't need to be capitalized. And it's just saying, okay, the next values we 
enter are going to be for velocity. And since they are a vector, we're putting a vector value. And that will equal our random velocity x, y, and z. X. And these also have to be in parentheses. Same here. Change it to Y and Z. Okay, what I had wrong was I had a comma right here instead of a semicolon. So we create that. Now we'll see. And our particles die anywhere between two to five are born. And they're not moving up because that they're not connected with that uniform field. So that's another handy trick.